The Hyundai Kona Electric redefines the kind of proposition we'd previously got used to affordable full electric cars being able to provide. The 279 mile WLTP rated driving range figure of the top version shames the market leading Nissan Leaf, yet the price being asked here isn't much different. The game just moved on. The way this car hurls itself away from rest is pretty surprising the first time you experience it. But once you understand the drive dynamics here though, the rush of blood to the head that this Hyundai gets every time you press the loud pedal with any real vigor is only to be expected. There's a lot more pulling power than would be generated by an equivalent combustion engine. 395 newton meters of torque and all of it's delivered to you right from the get-go rather than building as it would do with a fossil fuel power plant. 62 miles an hour from rest takes 9.7 seconds in the entry level 39 kilowatt hour version which has a reasonable WLTP rated 180 mile driving range between charges but most Kona electric customers are going to want the 64 kilowatt hour variant we're trying here which manages a WLTP rated range of 279 miles that sets a new standard amongst affordable EVs. Conserving that driving range requires careful management of the energy regenerative process that kicks in when you come off the throttle. Like some other EVs, this one provides you with paddle shifters behind the steering wheel that allow you to either intensify or reduce the regenerative braking feel. Alternatively, you can automize things using a smart regenerative braking system that constantly calculates the optimum level of braking regeneration based on the positioning of vehicles ahead. There's also a selectable virtual external sound system for creating artificial noise to warn those on the pavement of your approach in urban areas. On the open road, this car struggles a little with weight. It's 300 kilos heavier than a conventional Kona, but the even distribution of the battery pack across the floor plan helps with handling and a more advanced independent rear suspension setup has allowed the engineers to deliver a decent quality of ride. As usual with an EV, you get plenty of cabin screen options to allow you to plan your route around your remaining available charge. When it's depleted, you'll be able to recharge your Kona Electric to 80% of capacity in just 75 minutes if you can find a 50 kilowatt DC CCS charging point. Most of the time though, you'll be charging this Hyundai overnight using a seven kilowatt wall box that you'll have to pay a little extra to get installed in your garage. In the 64 kilowatt hour model, you can revive the cells from empty in this way in around nine and a half hours, which would use around nine pounds worth of electricity at current rates. It would take just over six hours if you were to go for the 39 kilowatt hour model. When Hyundai created its first mainstream electric car, the Ionic, it started from a clean sheet of paper. But with this Kona Electric, the company's keen to show that EV design can be just as effective when it uses a shared platform and body shell with combustion engined cars. It helps that the model in question here is a high riding SUV, so the batteries can be packaged in more easily without affecting cabin space, spread across the floor pan for a low center of gravity as they would be in a Tesla. Only from the front does this battery powered version very clearly visually differentiate itself, mainly through this closed plastic grill panel, which incorporates a flap for the charge point. In profile, as we've said, the look is much as it would be with any other Kona, though if you were to get your tape measure out, you'd find this one to be 15 millimeters longer. Move to the back and the styling flourishes come equally thick and fast. You know, your eyes drawn by the wraparound cladding that houses the redesigned indicators and the reversing lights, and then perhaps by these slim high set tail lamps, which are LED lit on most variants. At the wheel, the key change lies with the installation of this wider aircraft style silver trimmed center console, which incorporates the shift by wire push button controls for the single speed auto gearbox and additionally includes a useful extra storage area in its lower section. 
Also quite different is the single dial instrument binnacle, flanked on the right by an information screen and on both sides by EV readouts. Everything else you'll need to know will be on this centre dash screen, 8 inches in size on most variants, with mapping functionality that integrates into range readouts and helps you to locate nearby charging stations. The clear, neat graphics of this display make it easy to use and switch between energy information, EV routing, charge management and eco driving sections without having to spend hours briefing yourself with handbook tutorials. The cabin design is rather sombre and lacks much wow factor, but the comfy seats get standard lumbar support and there's reach adjustment for the three-spoke leather-trimmed multifunction steering wheel. Neither feature can be had in a rival Nissan Leaf. And in the rear, well, it's in this part of the car that you're likely to be most keenly reminded that you've bought an SUV based on a super mini sized platform rather than that of a family hatchback. As it turns out, it's not too bad in here for the carriage of two folk, providing they're not especially lanky of leg. If they are, then compromises will need to be made by the front seat occupants in order to be able to accommodate them. Push forward the 60-40 split folding rear seat and you'll reveal a relatively flat loading floor with as much as 1,114 litres of total fresh air if you load to the roof. For the first time, a relatively affordable EV has delivered the kind of relatively usable driving range that would make it almost usable as an only car. Better still, for almost the first time in testing an EV, we found here that the claimed range isn't so far away from what's actually achievable in everyday use. In a Volkswagen e-Golf, you'd get a classier interior. In a Nissan Leaf, you'd get more rear seat passenger space. But both those cars are completely trounced by the driving range this Kona Electric can offer in its higher output form, which is something that only this car's Kia cousin can match for the price. This Kona, though, has wider appeal. Enough to take it mainstream? Probably not. It won't be on sale in large enough numbers for a start, but it's a clearer signpost to an all-electric future than any we've seen for a while. And that makes it a very important car indeed.